Thank you. Thanks for this uh, kind introduction. And again, thank you, Jens and Rod, for this uh, big privilege to be part of such a great faculty. So today we're going to talk about priorities of treatment in patients with a spinal cord injury. In some slides, there's a kind of summarize of what Dr. Fellings and Dr. Jack mentioned previously. And uh, when we talk about priorities in patients with um, so spinal cord injury, um, as a spine surgeon, we always want to see how does the actual CT or MRI scan looks like, how extensive it is the spinal cord injury, and what treatment do we need operatively? But how about first-line care? As we have heard from Dr. Fellings before, there are many clinicians involved in patients with especially high cervical, uh, with especially high thoracic and cervical spinal cord injuries. So first of all, secure the airway, breathing, and circulation, followed by an appropriate spinal immobilization. And then, of course, a large volume intravenous fluid therapy due to hem hemodynamic changes from sudden loss of autonomic tone due to SCI. And what we've learned from literature is that during the acute injury systemic hypertension is associated with a worse neurologic outcome. And of course, early imaging, CT and MRI, I would rather go for CT uh, in comparison to X-ray because there might be something missed and of course in ICU management. And if you have an ICU unit in the department or it's like in your own department, so it's always favorable to have ICU care there. Time is spine, this is what we've heard um, previously, early decompression surgery. I think we can mention it now for the third time. It's very important, below 24 hours, uh, because we know it is safe and associated with an improved neurologic outcome, which was defined at at least two grade AIS improvement at six month follow up. And when we talk about ICU management, of course, and again, this was mentioned before, respiratory, hemodynamic, and cardiac monitoring, maintaining adequate spinal cord perfusion with a MAP above 85 to 90 millimeters mercury post-injury, which has already shown an improved outcome for patients for the first seven days post-injury. And what we've heard from Dr. Jack before, oxygen saturation should be maintained over 90%. This was perfectly done in this case, which was, um, uh, which was transferred to Swedish and treated very well. And don't forget about prophylaxis to prevent deep venous thrombosis. And this also should be made, ad administered as soon as possible. And the question arises, why ICU? What about the hospitals without ICU? Because it has been shown that the incidence of hypotension after cervical SCI um, was 25% at arrival to the emergency department. And the incidence of typical neurogenic shock was almost 20%, which is pretty, pretty high. And of course, the cardiovascular disturbances are the leading causes for morbidity and mortality in both acute and chronic phases of SCI. And the impairment of the very important autonomic nervous control system in patients with high SCI, cervical and high thoracic causes cardiac dysrhythmias. And what about uh, high dose methylprednisolone? alone? This was um, elucidated perfectly by Dr. Fellings. A high dose 24 hour regime is recommended when administered within eight hours of injury. But on the other side, the decision not to use high dose MPSS for the treatment of a specific spinal cord injury cannot be interpreted as a lack of treatment. So when we were talking about priorities in, it, for spine surgeons, emergency doctors, ICU doctors, but how about patient priorities? And we have seen a great review um, by Simpson et al. and where they tried to figure out the priorities the patients had. And the 24 articles were included and they categorized the articles on the content of the questionnaires and resulted this in two categories, life domain priorities and uh, health priorities. And uh, the health priorities are something like motor function, arm and hand and leg function, 
mobility, bowel and bladder function and sexual function. On the other side, we have the general life domains, something like health in general, relationships, family and friends. And the summary of the important health and life domains identified from the systemic re systematic review that are considered priorities by individuals, individuals with SCI. And the results are as followed. So the restoration of motor, bowel, bladder, and sexual function were identified as priorities for recovery, as you see in the upper um, image. Mobility function was more important to patients with paraplegia, and the restoration of arm-hand function was a specific priority for individuals with tetraplegia. So in a brief conclusion, I would summarize this as followed. Optimal pre-hospital and hospital logistics are important. As we have seen many, many times before, time is spine, and this is really true. ICU setting with respiratory, hemodynamic, and cardiac monitoring are important. So try to find a hospital with such units. Early surgical decompression below 24 hours. And of course, a concerted interdisciplinary effort is favorable. So I would like to thank you all for this great meeting. And again, thank you, SSF, and uh, for the friendship over the past years. Thank you, Dr. Ishak. Outstanding. Very good. Now, Jens, next on the agenda is spinal cord injury discussion. I see that we are very far behind, though, in regards to time. We are not doing uh, the Swiss model justice here by, um, by being so, so far behind. But what, what do you think? Where, where should we go here? We do, uh, one ARS question, and that is okay. the T2 nerve root preservation. And maybe you can editorialize. So can we pop that question up for our audience? They want to have that put on. And then we'll, how about we put on uh, an always popular question on steroids? What do you think about that? And then we switch to a stretch break and um, a quick poll of our industrial sponsors. Does that sound okay to you? Sounds Rick? great. Outstanding. So for routine posterior C1, C2 fusions with screw fixation, do you favor preserving the C2 greater occipital nerve? Yes or no? Oh, yes. This is easy. Why would you get rid of a nerve with the name greater in front of it? I agree. <laughs> Okay, we, we will see. We will see what the uh, audience says. Now, I, I don't see that the numbers are going to come up for me yet, so you're going to have to tell us. I will. What the answer is. Oh, so oh, you can see that. There it is. This is a red wave. Preserving. Yes, 85% say preserve the C2 nerve. We have a very good audience, Jens. We have a very, very smart audience here. I, I, I'm taking a picture of this and showing this to my nerve root sacrificing <laughs> partner, Dr. O. <laughs> Perfect. No, Dr. O. Next question uh, will be the steroid question. Since this is, again, uh, obsessed uh, a lot of people and has a lot of controversy, maybe you can editorialize from your perspective your thoughts on steroids or no, or poll some of our great panelists, uh, uh, steroids, yes or no, and then we'll move on to the uh, industry exhibits. Okay, so is the question up? I don't see it yet. I don't see the question yet. So uh, Ashley is working hard on steroids for okay. SCI. Mask is two dose, please vote. So NASCIS 2 is the uh, less than eight hours. You give the blast and uh, maintenance for 24 hours and then stop. Just as Michael was telling us. So. Industry? Uh, industry sponsors? We're doing the industry walk around. Where are they? Oh, they're all, it's all online. Oh, yeah. so how can I ask questions? So Jens, I do not see the answer coming up. Oh, so again, there we go. Yes, 68% say yes for steroids. You know, that's really, really interesting. I think Michael has changed our, our thinking. I mean, I think a year ago, Jens, it would have been a lot less than that. Do you agree? 
Yeah, we had when we had John Hurlbert here, he gave yeah. a very convincing lecture about don't give it. Uh, I'd yes. be curious to hear Ashraf and uh, Wilson, uh, Zach, uh, give their perspective. So UCSF, steroids in your trauma center for acute SCI, yes or no? Uh, we, are, we don't give them. Um, will you change your mind after hearing Dr. Failing's talk? Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think we get strong consideration in uh, young patients with a cervical level injury. Um, but I think um, there is a benefit to sort of having institutional protocols, um, but it needs to be a lot more nuanced and focused on individual patient population or specific patient populations. Zach, wash you. Yeah, no, I, I think both uh, the neuro and my orthopedic colleagues, none of us are using steroids. John France, you're an old timer like me. Steroids, yes or no? I, I kind of agree with Mike. We use them on the rare young patients, cervical injury, no, low risk for the complications like pulmonary injury, but I have to fight my trauma people. Our protocol is a very select group where we think the harm will be little and if there's benefit, that would be great. But Rick, so give us your perspective. The harm in Dr. Feelings' uh, words was not that significant. I mean, I, I know, I remember all those stories about infections. We were one of the NASCAS two sites at Harborview. We didn't have those pulmonary deteriorations. We did not have those infections. We did not have those GI bleeds. What about Indianapolis? Yeah, I, Jens, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed to see this, this turnaround uh, because, you know, just a year or two ago, it, it was a concern that there was too many, too, too many complications associated with high, high dose steroids. Frankly, I didn't see those complications, just, just like you, but the literature um, seemed to imply that there was significant complications. Um, but, you know, times change. And, and I, I do use steroids. I, I use steroids exactly as John says, for young patients and especially cervical, cervical injuries. And thoracic complete injuries are just a lost cause, and I take it. Yep. Did I interpret Michael in the same way that for thoracic cord injury, it's just a no-go? Yes, and especially in older patients where maybe the complications uh, are more significant. Great.